everyone. Good day. It is my distinct pleasure to once again welcome you all to the fifth episode of the World Flower Council My Country Floral Design Virtual Demonstration. Today, we are very pleased to have with us three of our dear World Flower Council friends and great designers from three different countries. I am honored to present them to you and of course, they will be properly introduced later, later formally by our event director, Mr. Pubas Chismuti. Our first designer will be Ms. Madhu Shah, representing Australia. She will be followed by Mr. Boris Menyalo from Suchi, Russia. Our third designer for this afternoon's event will be Ms. Jacqueline Borma, AIFD, of the Netherlands to guide us through in appreciating the creations of our designers will be our commentators, Ms. Els Hasenberg, AIFD from the Netherlands and Mr. Malcolm Angus, who is also our World Flower Council newsletter editor from down under New Zealand. I know this will be another interesting and exciting event. So please stay tuned and let us all enjoy the show. Thank you very much, Mr. Efren Chateau, International Chairman of World Flower Council. Today, once again, it's my honor to present to you our first designer from down under Australia, Madhu Shah from Australia. Madhu was born in Kenya. She loves flowers and she loves Madhu was born in Kenya, always loved flowers and learned the basic arrangement since the age of 12, then become a member and afterwards the president of Kenya Floral Art Club and did demonstration and justice course in Nairobi as well. From there in Nairobi, she started a flower shop with accessory supply and that did a lot of weddings in Nairobi. Later on, in 1999, Madhu has moved to Australia and become a member of New South Wales Floral Arts. She was the committee or, and then for a long time, at the present, she is the president of the New South Wales Floral Arts Association and one of the director of the World Association of Floral Arts. We know Madhu as Madhu and her own particular style is always admiring and inspire us in many, many different directions. She has demonstrated and judged floral art in India, Kenya, Oman, Dubai, Japan, Barbados, etc. So I would like to present to you now Miss Madhu Shah from Australia. And today our commentator who will work along with Madhu is the one and only our dear Els Hasenberg AIFD from the Netherlands. Thank you. Thank you, Pooh. Good morning to everyone and happy to see you. And I'm looking forward very much to Madhu's uh, designs. I'm excited to see designs uh, in a total different part of the world. So good luck to you, Madhu, and welcome. Thank you, Elsa. Elsa. Good morning, everybody, or good evening, or good afternoon. Different parts of the world have different timings. It's six after 6 p.m. here, and it's, it's been raining for a, more than a week now. It hasn't stopped. Some parts of Australia have been flooded. But um, anyway, we need the rain anyway. Um, Thank you so much, Pooh and Colleen, for inviting me to do the World Flower Council demonstration today. I'm honored to do a demonstration and hope um, I can show some techniques um, which, which will um, be useful to some, some of the floral designers. 
uh, in one of my designs, I've just taken the mesh wire, the copper mesh or the silver mesh. I've tied the badalina sticks and wet them and let it dry so that it's curved. And then when, when, when it's dry, you just cut them into pieces and weave them through, through the mesh. That's what I'll show you in my design, how I've done it. Uh, the other thing I've done is made a basket. I just want to show the floral contents of Australia and just through a basket, it would be really nice to see all the materials that we use in Australia. So it's again a mesh cut in a rectangle form and leaving one side long, uh, one side of the wire longer and then making a round and taking that, that wire through to make a basket. I've just, I'm just clipping the wire through. And then what I've done is at one end, just cut three different, cut, cut the wire like three, three of these and fold it so it makes a basket, fold it and it, so that's how I've done my basket. Once I've done that, you, the ends of the, the mesh can be pinned in so it stays in place. And then with a glue gun, I've just, um, just bits and pieces of paper. This is a washi paper. So with, with a glue gun, just, just glued some glue on the mesh and attached it like that. And that's how I done my basket. I'll show you the design that I'm going to show you, going to work on. So this is the mesh that I've done with the Madalena sticks. And I've just woven some of the Madalena sticks uh, through and then attached it to a container which has a mesh metal base as well. And that's the basket that, that I just showed you. I've got some um, recyclable or um, biodegradable oases in there and I've got some tubes as well. Uh, this material is Sorry, this material is uh, one of the anthurium leaves, a kind of an anthurium leaf, which is really, really stunning, lasts a long time. And that's what I'm going to use. Um, I've used one already on, on that side and then I'm crossing over things on this side. So it's going to be crossover of all the materials. In Australia, we because it's a huge, huge country, we, we get very diverse plant material. Uh, on the north, we've got the tropicals like the heliconias. Uh, we've got um, anthuriums, um, all the tropical materials we get. And we get everything in the Sydney markets as well, which is, a, I went to the markets on Friday and it was an amazing, amazing market. Everything from all over the world, you could get it. The Colombian roses and the Kenyan roses were there and also the tropicals from up north. So it's, an, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, leucodendrons, varieties of leucodendrons are really a huge variety there. I've, I've got, um, this one is uh, another type of uh, leucodendron, which is a really uh, matches my color, takes the rhythm through with the color as well. And it's, it's a really um, stunning um, piece of uh, plant material. I've got bird's nest fern here, which is going horizontally on this side. And I've got the dried version of it as well. Um, just to take this color, this brown color through on this side as well. So I've got that as well. Uh, to take it through the design. I've tied my tubes on one side so that I can place my material in water and it gives a lot of depth. These are the, so these ones are the Xenthoria grass and the Xenthoria grass is a really, I want to show, it's a really, um, really big trunk 
and then the grass and the dried version is, is this one that I'm going to use. So that's the dried version. And this part is the trunk of, uh, it's the trunk where you get, um, and the, the seed heads are really, really long. This is one of them that I've got here, which is as more than my height, but you can get even higher than these and curly ones as well, like, like in this photograph. So just wanted to show some of the, some of the Australian plant material. And that's, that's the trunk, that's, that's the trunk, slice of a trunk. And when, when you get, when you, this is the end part of it that I'm, I'm, I'm using with the stem. So really beautiful plant material and lasts a long time. And this is the dried version of it. So just going to place some of that in a crisscross manner. Madhu, the structure is really exciting and I love it that it is asymmetrical and that you work from both sides. That gives it a lot of movement and uh, the colors are very well chosen with the base of the of the basket that you have covered with the paper and the colors that you are um, uh, combining. And you prepared it very well um, with showing us which material you are using and with the photograph of the, the exciting plant of the grass that you are using. It is really, uh, really beautiful uh, so far. Thank you Thank for you. showing uh, that uh, uh, the structure and the technique. Yeah, it's something simple and can be doable very easily. And yeah, I want, I want to showcase a lot of the uh, plant material um, we get here in Australia. And in the other design, I'll show the different banks. Yes, but at the moment, unfortunately, only one type of banksia is in season, but I'll show the dried version of some of the others. Um, so that, that's the, that's the uh, Brunei. It's a really long lasting uh, material, really good to use uh, in designs and lasts a very long time. I don't know if you can see it, it's that one. It's a yes. beautiful plant material and the texture and the colors of the pinkish in there and pinks in all the other ones is just very stunning. Yeah, as, as Pooh said, I, I used to live in Kenya and now I've moved here, but it, it was very, very different. The, when I came here, the floral art here was like, for example, I did a traditional arrangement and it was very different. I, I did the Nafa style design and it was very, very different. Uh, here they do a very stiff triangle. And when I, I had to come and do my judges course and everything here again, but, and um, I got failed because I did a very, very loose triangle. But anyway, I learned a lot when I came here. I've got, I've made so many floral art friends all throughout the world. It's been amazing with the, with the uh, World Flower Council as well as, um, as well as with uh, Wafa and Afa as well. So it's been just absolutely wonderful to, to join these floral um, designers groups, basically. Well, I'm, I'm really uh, very impressed uh, with, uh, with the design and with the movement in it and the textures uh, that you used. It's uh, really an art piece and you are very creative and I'm glad you had the opportunity to develop your creativity and not just work in, an, uh, in a symmetrical triangle. What you are doing now is the grass. That is what we call the sheltering yeah, technique. And that makes, yeah. makes whatever is underneath that grass, it makes it more important. And your eye is drawn uh, towards that part of the design. Yes. Uh, and there are lots of seed pods as well. That's the eucalyptus seed pod. And that's another eucalyptus seed pod. 
There are more than 1,500 types of eucalyptus, uh, Australian um, indigenous eucalyptus. I'm not using those, but I just wanted to show some of the things that um, can be used. That's my first piece, and I'll, I'll talk about the second piece soon. So it's just a crisscross of plant material showing the north side. Uh, some of you came to Brisbane, so that's our north side where all the tropicals uh, grow. And uh, that's the lirio, that's very, um, very, very useful for designing as well. And the textures, the rough and the smoothness and the colors go through. So hope you like, um, enjoyed my first design. And I'll it's, go to the second one. It is beautiful. It's really amazing. And I like, uh, there's a lot of depth in there and uh, a beautiful technique, the way you used uh, all the sticks. Uh, did you glue those sticks together or did you wire them? Uh, the Madalena sticks are just woven through the wire. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the second design I'm using is styrofoam and I just want to show how I've done it. Just any piece of styrofoam. It can be anything leftovers from your, when the packaging comes for your TV or um, any packed things which has got styrofoam. Styrofoam is very difficult to, um, um, uh, it, go, it goes to the land, by, um, it's very difficult to de uh, biodegrade basically. So it's, it's useful if you get these type of things to use it in floral art. So what I've done is just some, some paste of wood glue and you just paste it on there and just uh, place some, uh, sorry. I've got some of the cut ribbons there, cut paper. You just shred the paper and, and glue it on. And that's how I've done my design. Just place the whole of this uh, with paper. It's a wood glue with half water, half wood glue, and just pasted it on the, on the styrofoam. The best part about the styrofoam is the mechanics to, to push it, put in the mechanics is very, very easy. What I've done is I've got, I'll show you to the design in another way. So that's a leftover of, of one of the TV things and I've pasted purple on it. And that's just a wood with aluminum stand. What, what you do is if that is 10 centimeter stand, you buy a 12 centimeter one make a hole in the styrofoam and push, the, glue it, put, put glue over here and push the star, push it in there and then, then put it on your stand. And so it does not move. Yeah, be, if you've got the support at the, inside this, it will not move. So that's how I've done my mechanics with, with, with my design. This is just to show you how to do the mechanics. That's very good, a very good idea. And to recycle uh, the styrofoam and use it yeah. in a creative way, that is wonderful. So we shouldn't throw away all these materials. Oh, beautiful. So, so that's the styrofoam I've used. I've put, pasted yellow color on it just to show the sunshine of Australia. It becomes really, really hot in uh, November, December, January, February. Uh, at my place last year, one month of 50 degrees uh, centigrade, it was that hot. So I'm just showing that yellow color in there. And then I want to show some of the, um, um, some of the famous places of Australia. So here is the uh, bleached uh, dyed uh, root, which is, uh, which is a reddish maroonish color, which I want to show as Uluru, which is a very famous tourist destination in Australia. It's in the center of Australia, about 350 uh, meters high. It's a very sacred place for the indigenous Australians. And the, the colors change uh, depending on the season and depending on the time of the day, the colors of the rock change. It's the largest um, rock um, in the Southern hemisphere. But, um, and it, it, some of the plant material there is very, very different, which of course I don't have it here, but just wanted to show some of the materials there and talk about some of the banksias that, that are available. 
I'll use some of the ones. Um, these ones are Banksia speciosa, which are dried, but their fresh looks in a similar way. And that's the, that one is uh, Banksia, which is um, old man's beard. And it, it, it stays like this, even dried, it stays like that. And those are huge. Some of them are really that big of Banksias and very, very heavy. The wax flowers. Okay. So that, that is Baxteri, which is a dried version of it. And what happens is when it gets very hot, these pods open up. These pods open up like that and the seeds come out and germinate again. Uh, it always, sometimes even needs fire, fire goes through these uh, lens and opens up the pods. So sometimes we say fires are bad, for, for, but for these plants, it's good because they open up uh, to get the seeds out. So that's another Be Banksia baxteri. Uh, I'm using some of the Banksia annuata, which are these, these are the candlesticks. And they, these are fresh, these are really beautiful. What I've done with my, uh, what my, with my, um, with my tubes is I've taken bamboo because I've used bamboo rings around it, the same bamboo tied thick wire on it. And with the styrofoam, this one, uh, the, the, the wires go through. So it's very easy to do the mechanics um, in this styrofoam as well. And, the, and of course the bamboo will hold the water. We also have some dyed um, banksias. Well, I'm not going to use that today, but we, um, we have got some dyed banksias. Um, available as well. So these are the, It is a beautiful structure. And I'm glad you give us all the information about the different materials that grow in your country. Uh, that's yeah. the idea of the World Flower Council Country Design Show that you share um, things from your, your own country and uh, the explanation about all the banksias that you're using, they're really beautiful. The way you're using them, the dried ones and the fresh ones. And uh, it's wonderful to get that information from you. Thank you. It's, um, so we, we get a lot of uh, leucodendrons. We get uh, the pin cushions. We get very freely. Um, and it, yeah, the, the market was just amazing yesterday. So I'm, I'm using some of the... Uh, can, these are the only ones available which are fresh at the moment. Um, I also wanted to talk about the Great Barrier Reef. Um, at the moment, it's one third of the coral is in the Great Barrier Reef, which is up north. But most of it is as bleached as this root. It's all white. It's gone really bad because it's been bleached because of the acidity and the climate change. Um, and uh, they're trying to restore it, but it will take ages and ages to restore that beautiful, beautiful uh, part of the world. These are the philodendron leaves, which are really, uh, really amazing color, matches the bamboo very well, and it takes the color through. Um, yes, and uh, at the moment, because of the high temperatures and because of the global warming, um, the coral is really suffering. When I went there first time, the fish were schools and schools of fish in these colors, the yellows and the, and the vex, uh, these, um, these are the vex flowers, which are, which, which are Australian natives as well. Uh, we get in pink and white, but these are dyed into a, this orangey color. Um, so where I couldn't get the wires in, what I've done is I've used some of these, some of these tubes because it's got a, a, a point there which I could push into the styrofoam and to disguise the glass because I didn't want any glass there. I've just put rings of uh, bamboo on it so that there's one here. I've put rings on it so that it doesn't show. I've, I'm going to put a flower there so it doesn't show. But um, that's how um, some, some places I couldn't get the, 
bamboo through. So that's how I've disguised the glass, glass tubes. What happened there? A little shorter. So here's the uh, end of wildflowers in Western Australia are amazing. They're really good to see as well. There are so many things in Australia, so much different, diverse climates. There is no snowy mountains which you can go and ski. And there is the all all around Australia. There is the beach. Um, so a lot of um, sea sports, any of the sports in, for the sea is done. So there's snow, there's wind, there's everything, all the climates in Australia from up to the, uh, from the north to the, to the uh, base. I also wanted to show you, it's just not paper. You can, this is cork and you can shred the cork and paste it as well. So that's another way of doing it as well. And, um, I think I'm about done with this one. I'll just see if there's any any empty spaces left. Put some of these. It's it's yeah. a beautiful uh, shape, and I like it very much that you used um, as a contrast with the compact shape and the and the strong form banksias that you used those um, givey vines as a line, as, as to give the arrangement more movement. That's very cleverly done. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to depict the coral and the fish here. And that's uh, how I've used all my materials. I hope I've placed everything. Yeah, that looks okay. I don't, I don't think I need that one. The smaller one. So that's one of the designs, um, the second one. And then I'll just briefly show you something that I've done. I know that it's nearly time for me to finish, but that's my second design. It is amazing. And uh, it's very well in balance, the two designs, uh, the two uh, parts of the designs. There are two focal points there. And that um, is really in balance with the base, with the structural form. It's like an art piece. It's, it's, it's like uh, uh, really very impressive. Thank you so much, Els. Um, the other one I'm showing is a wreath that I've done. The copper base is, this is just a copper base that I've got. And this is um, a very thin slice of the baobab tree which was very much in, um, we get in, um, I used to get it in Kenya and just strips of it. I had wound uh, round this um, and just uh, glued it on. So that, that's how I did my wreath. And then I've got some, uh, we've seen a lot of cane being used uh, by taking some of the cane and uh, winding with wire. What I do, I don't wind with wire. What I do is, I've, I've just got any any kind of stand and then Madalena um, Madalena sticks. I've, I've um, cable tied it very very tightly and then I just we I plait it. I plait the I plait the cane and then take one one each and then plait it again in that way so that it's it's so much easier than winding with the way we, we, are, we are usually taught, it's very much easier. So I'm just taking, I'm making two plaits and then taking one more and then, yeah, I'm just uh, weaving it through to make a sort of a structure, which is really easily done. So that's how um, I've done a structure. I'll, sh I'll show the finished structure just now. I've done opposite sides of this, uh, making it in a heart shape as well for the Valentine's. But this is just a round thing. The only thing you have to be sure is take, take the ones in a line from, from here. You can't cross over because it will not, um, 
it will not be uh, good to do that. So that's how I've just done my structure very quickly. And then I've used this, this wreath ring, this, this structure to make my wreath uh, ring. So once you come to that, just um, paper cover wire or just cable tie it at the moment. I'm just showing you as a sample so that it's quicker. And take it out of this one. And cable tie that as well. So, so that it becomes a structure like that we've seen things like that very often. So I put my my wreath here with the with the baobab uh, baobab uh, ring, and then I put rick rack on the plating that I've done, and some baubles and uh, jute balls and some um, uh, dyed carnations. So that's my third piece. Wonderful. It's very informative and you are a very um, good uh, teacher and showing us and sharing us, us these wonderful techniques that you have developed. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. That was a beautiful demonstration and I'm sure everyone uh, agrees uh, with that. Thank you for sharing all, all that uh, with us and sharing part of your country and the beautiful materials that you have available in your country and uh, teach us how to use it. You Thank really you. inspired us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you. Bye. What a wonderful design and really very, very special. You know, you made Australia proud, Madhu. On behalf Thank of World you. Flower Council, I would like to invite Mr. Malcolm Ankers, Director of Education of World Flower Council, to say the word of thanks to our designers and commentators, please. Madhu, I think that was an absolutely informative program. So often we um, watch a designer work and we sit there and think to ourselves, how did that go? What happened there? But you have been wonderful in that you have shown us right from the start how you have approached the design and then um, materialized it. And that's what I call a design, uh, something that you've created from scratch to really uh, make us appreciate the beautiful material that you've used. Else, what a wonderful compliment you have um, made for Madhu in helping uh, just explain and endorse so many of the new techniques which um, Madhu has uh, brought to us um, uh, this evening. So Madhu, thank you for sharing. That's what World Council is all about, sharing and caring. Else, thank you so much. Thank you for um, once again um, endorsing uh, all of the actions which um, have been shown to us this evening. Thank you. Welcome. This is all about World Flower Council, all about, and we are very fortunate. We have a lot of um, great teachers, and they love to share. They are very knowledgeable. Today, we have Madhu from Australia, as well as we have Els from Holland. Last, we also have Malcolm to explain and say, you know, appreciations, and he also a great teacher from, the, from New Zealand. For the next designer, I'm so admiring this country. I've been there three times in different seasons of the, the climate and uh, in, even in the uh, very cold white night, uh, Foro Festival and Russia. Yes, I'm talking about Russia. It's a large country and very, very exciting and very, very special heritage 
Today, we have a very long time member and friend from Russia. Our next designer is Mr. Boris. Boris is our dear friend. He is the master forest. Thank you. Boris is our dear friend. He is the master forest from Sochi, Russia, which is uh, one very cold city of Russia. And he is the land art. He is the national judge as well as acting active athlete in dance sport. Yes, it's not wrong. Dance sport with flowers. Yes. You know, we have a lot of, um, you know, um, a lot of artists, which is, you know, different uh, character and different culture. Boris is a very strong, uh, very talented designer. He graduated from the many, many certificates around the world. From Holland, from Sochi, he also judged and the award-winning designers and competitors around the world. Thank you. We have Boris. And along with Boris today, it's our honor and pleasure to have Malcolm Ankers, our World Flower Council Director of Education, to give his commentary and enjoy the design along with creation of our designer today. Please, Malcolm. Well, it's lovely to see uh, Boris again. We enjoyed very much um, hosting uh, Boris and or the two Borises and uh, friends uh, at the World Flower Council Summit in Auckland some 10 years ago. So it's wonderful to see you again, Boris. And uh, I know your uh, interpreter is going to work closely with you and uh, will explain most things, but I'll just ask a few things that I think uh, uh, our members would like to know about as well. So good to see you, Boris. Welcome aboard. Hello. No. Uh, okay. 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 Hello, everybody. Я всех приветствую. Рад видеть своих коллег и своих друзей, которых давно не видел. I'm greeting everyone, and I'm happy to see my colleagues and my friends, whom I haven't seen for a while already. Мы живем в России, но живем в таком месте, не характерном для всей страны. Живем на самом юге России, где субтропический теплый климат. So we live in Russia, but Russia is so big and so different. I'm happy to live in the southernmost part of Russia with subtropical climate, very, very warm climate. It's a wonderful piece of Russia. Поэтому все растения, которые я буду использовать в своей работе, это растения выросли у нас здесь в саду. So all the plants I'm going to use today for my show uh, are growing in the garden of the hotel where I work. So they all are endemics, they all are local plants. Хочу немножко рассказать об основе, которая здесь использована в этой работе. So I would like to tell a couple of words about the basements that I'm using in my work today. Это не единая доска из дерева. It's not one piece of wood. Это основа сделана из двух металлопластиковых труб водопроводных. Uh, so the basement is made of two water supplying uh, polyester tubes. Я задал вот эту определенную форму этими трубами, которые очень гибкие. So uh, the tubes are very flexible and I managed to shape the form which I needed. 
за тем, чтобы сделать объем этой основе, я оплел ее флористической сеткой. Then to adjust some volume to that construction, I've used uh, the floral network. И чтобы можно было на нее что-то крепить, эту uh, основу, я еще покрыл uh, использованным уже повторно синтепоном. So to be able to attach some items on that sheep, I'm using the reused moss foam, polyester moss, moss foam. И мы в своих работах стараемся использовать материалы, которые были уже использованы в других работах, но трансформированные совсем по-другому. So we are looking forward to using the materials that we have previously used in other works, just transforming them or using them in another shape. Uh, и uh, потом я эту основу заклеил uh, корой uh, эвкалипта. Then I have covered that basement, that shape, with eucalyptus bark. Который тоже прекрасно растет в нашем регионе. So in our region we have a lot of eucalyptus trees, it grows very well here. Х хотя он родом из Австралии. Though it originally is from Australia, but it found its second home in Sochi, Russia. Сейчас я использую в своей работе кизильник, катанастер. Now I'm using a cottonista or rock spray, some people call it. What a wonderful privilege you have to have all of that material uh, and live on the doorstep of your hotel. It's really true. It's really so. And Boris takes care of all the plants in the garden of the hotel. Теперь я беру, использую декоративную капусту, которая по форме напоминает снежинку. So now I'm going to use the um, decorative cabbage, which uh, the shape of it resembles a little bit snowflakes. Так как у нас скоро близится Новый год, As soon as we are facing the new year, the eve of the new year, в основном эти работы будут посвящены uh, этому празднику. Most of my works will be dedicated to this beautiful holiday, to the new year. Uh, сетка и <coughs> основа этой композиции, из-за того, что она сделана uh, рыхлой, она позволяет uh, протыкать uh, стебли растений сквозь эту основу. Mm -hmm. uh, the floral netting uh, enables me to put the plants which I'm using, just it goes very easily through it. Затем я предварительно приготовил вот такие вот шары из uh, хризантемы, которая выросла у нас уже в нашем регионе. I have also prepared, I have pre-prepared that shrub chrysanthemum balls, which also grows here. It's a local plant. Uh, 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 the floral moss foam is inside. It gives the shape of a ball. Uh, uh, it keeps the flowers fresh for a long time. That is adding a very dynamic color to the design, isn't it? Wonderful. I'm using a vase which is made of broken pieces of glass. It is filled with fresh water. Поэтому uh, часть растений я ставлю стебли в воду. So some plants I put inside the water. Иногда мы в своих работах используем атмосферные бромели в ксерографика. 
sometimes we use in our works Filanza uh, xerographica. Которая растет у нас в оранжерее. It goes in our summer house. It grows in our summer house here. That's extending the white. So it seems I have finished. Интересные основы, они как бы предполагают использование достаточно небольшого количества флористического материала, но достигается большой декоративный эффект. So using an interesting basement allows you with very, very few plants and flowers, create an interesting work. И так как мы еще работаем и обслуживаем отель Лазурная, our, our occupation is serving the hotel Лазурная and its garden, not only the hotel, but its garden too. И они испытывают необходимость в использовании интерьерных подобных композиций. So the hotel urgently needs interior compositions like that. Okay. So that's my first work, which is finished. Beautiful. And would, would you use structures like that within the hotel uh, in different rooms? So works like that will be used both for the rooms and I think for the interior as well. It's certainly bringing the outdoors in to a hotel and what a joy it must be to stay there with the beautiful gardens. Uh, Boris says that they are very lucky uh, to have such a management of the hotel that is also interested in floristics. They like it too. И во второй работе, продолжая uh, новогоднюю историю, Предлагаю вот такую вот настольную композицию, которая прекрасно будет смотреться на новогоднем столе. So with my second work, I'm going to continue the New Year story. So I want to offer a work like that, which is a very decorative item for any New Year table. В основе этой композиции я использовал кусок фанеры. So the basement is just a piece of plywood. На нем я закрепил на клей бокалы из-под шампанского. I have mantled champagne glasses on it, turned over glasses. И закрепил свечи. And have put the rosy candles on them. И для создания зимнего настроения я использовал вискозный искусственный снег. Just to give a hint of the New Year atmosphere, I've used artificial snow. Также я использовал здесь уже после обрезки орешника ветки крашеные. I've also used painted hazelnut twigs, which I have cut in the garden. И закреплены на ножках бокала. So they also mantled and settled on their um, um, on, on uh, champagne glasses turned over upside down. And since our very warm and humid climate enables us to you to grow a lot of southern brushes and uh, beautiful flowers. Uh, здесь я использую uh, суккулентные растения, которые долгое время могут uh, находиться без воды. I'm using here succulents that can survive without water for a long time. Это аптения. Uh, I use аптения. Cordialis. И эхиверия. And эхиверия or stone rose.
that's adding a little bit of visual weight that is wonderful. So natural. Также здесь используются атмосферные бромелевые, которые тоже не требуют воды. I'm also using atmospheric bromeliads because they also do not need water. No humidity is needed. Они воду влажность потребляют с воздуха. So they consume humidity from the air. И также для экзотического вида я использую орхидеи, которые купленные были несколько лет назад и несколько раз были использованы в оформлении, а теперь они уже в очередной раз в пятый или в шестой зацветают у нас в интерьере отеля. And it's an interesting hint which is Boris using now. So it's an orchid flower which was bought about five or six years ago. It is blooming every year. So this year it bloomed in the hotel and Boris uses uh, this piece of beauty as a large hint to his composition. Ну и так как они не могут, эти цветы нежные, находиться без воды, предварительно я закрепил стеклянные колбочки и пробирки. Uh, so as these flowers can stay for a long time without water, I can attach them to glass bulbs and test tubes. Очень удобная в уходе композиция. Достаточно просто с увлажнителя пройти и пробрызгать водой. So this composition is very easy to be kept alive. It's just enough to spray a little bit of water over it, and that's all. It doesn't need anything else. ...situation, because uh, uh, the low maintenance would be um, a tremendous advantage. Isn't that beautiful? Imagine a dinner with that as the centerpiece. Wonderful. The final touch. And that's the light for the new year. Это как раз будет на на новогодний обед, Борис. Да, да. So it's supposed yeah, to decorate the new year table. So the second word work is also finished. Now, Boris, that's a complete contrast that we, we saw in your previous two pieces. Uh, I'm happy to say that the materials that I have used for this composition are already used for the second and third time too. So we have reshamed, reformed the materials, but we are using them again and again. Здесь вот эта вот основа, она изготовлена из куска пеноплекса, оставшегося после строительства. So the basement of this structure is made of the foam which was used in the construction. These are the remains of the construction foam. It's a plastic base made by us. И использованы листья магнолии. And magnolia leaves. Символ нашего города. It's the symbol of Sochi. It's even depicted on the emblem of the city. Который я сложил пополам вдоль. I've double folded them. Right. И склеены между собой. And glued them together. Ah. And the uh, and folding and the... gluing gives mm -hmm. uh, good depth and drama. 
Wow. Создается такая интересная фактура. Uh, so the material looks like that. Very interesting when I uh, double fold the leaves of magnolia and when they are dried. И чтобы придать некую дороговизну этой работе, мы покрыли краской. To make it look more luxuriant, maybe we have put some paint on this structure. И чтобы задать тоже новогоднее настроение, добавили немножко глиттера. And of course, thinking about the new year, we have added some glitter. Также здесь использованы бромели как подсвечники для свечей. Like uh, chandeliers, why have used bromeliads? И гирлянда сделана из ягод пироканты, которая у нас очень хорошо используется в озеленении города. And the garland is made of piracanta fruit, which is widely used all around the city to decorate different corners of Sochi. Mm -hmm. This is how it looks like. Наверху композиции использованы шишки, плоды ликвидамбра. Uh, so on top of the construction, uh, the decoration is made of liquid umber seeds, dry seeds. Right. And I also use meta sequoia cones. They look like that. Yes. Sequoia grows in Sochi too, in very many places. They're making a very elegant contrast, aren't they? Добавлю для. I just want to. Основной фокус на точке. I just want to create the major focus point of the composition. Которая вынесена за пределы основы. It is outside the basement. Хризантему. These are chrysanthemums. Pompon chrysanthemum. They should attract attention of the viewer outside the major part of the composition. So, it's finished. So the work number three is also finished. Beautiful. Such lovely textural contrast. So now comes work number four. It will be a bouquet. В основе я использовал из ивовой лозы сплетенные вот такой формы лепестки. So the foundation of my bouquet is, is a frame of wine molds. Uh, из проволоки сделан каркас. Uh, the wires have helped me to make the uh, base of it. И uh, косичка сплетена из новозеландского льна. Рода из Новой Зеландии. The braid is made of New Zealand linen formum. Который, который тоже у нас очень широко используется в озеленении. We also use it as a decorative element in the garden of the hotel too. И букет хочу сделать как напоминание о лете. So my bouquet should bring the memories of the summer which has gone by in Russia. Notice as Boris uh, places these Irina, stems, they're all radiating fr from a central axis. So it's a spiral shape of my bouquet. При этом здесь много отверстий, через которые можно пропустить стебель цветов. And there are a lot of holes that I can put flowers through. В 
Да, здесь используем цветы матрикария танацету. So the flowers I'm using are matricaria, chamomile, львиный зев, антиринум, антиринум, который у нас растет садах. We have it in all gardens all around the city. It's a popular flower here. Veronica. I also use Veronica. И вот такие колосья мискантуса. Uh, and I also use uh, Chinese miscanthus spikes. Заодно представлю моего ассистента Светлану Варцаба, которую вы тоже очень хорошо знаете. I also want to introduce my assistant Svetlana. You for sure know Svetlana very well. She is visiting us. Uh, she came from St. Petersburg, especially for the event. Notice how all the stems are, have been cleaned beautifully, so they're easy for Boris to insert. You know, for exotic atmosphere of this bouquet, for exotic feeling, I'm also using date palm uh, seeds or fruits we go a lot of date palm here in Sochi, so I often use it in my works. And I'm using fern leaves, which also grows here. Uh, I can add on my part that Sochi is a beautiful subtropical territory between the mountain tops and the sea. So a lot of fern leaves, you can find a lot of fern in the mountains. Сейчас я использую ветки хвойного кустарника, кипарисовика, горохоплодного, нефеносного. Now I'm using a pea flowered Neticula filifera golden. И веточка плеща. And one branch of ivy to finish the bouquet. Now I need a cord to cut a piece of cord. Notice that Boris is tying that cord around three or four times before he ties it securely uh, because some of those materials are quite weighty and uh, are giving beautiful line and he, he wants to make sure that they're going to uh, not move uh, but will be uh, held firmly when they're placed in the vase. Beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you. 
И сейчас под конец для вас у меня небольшой сюрприз. Now before I finish my presentation, I've got a surprise for you. одну работу. I want you to see one of my works, but I have to go to that part of my work, so I will give you comments on the way. It will take about two, three minutes while going there. So we're going uh, from the room where Boris has been working into the uh, actual hotel space, and um, there's going to be a marvelous surprise for us, I'm sure. The uh, 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 all of which is done by uh, Boris and his colleagues from the garden. Uh, utilized in all sorts of different ways. And uh, this is a real privilege to be able to see this foyer of the hotel. Wow. So we are there, we are there. Now you can see the Christmas tree, which Boris has called a winter illusion. The design was blurred outline. So some ash tree branches, garlands and icicles of acrylic. Uh, design is использован с размытым контуром. Необычный подход so, к оформлению рождественской елки. As Boris says, it's an unusual approach to the decoration of the Christmas tree because the design is with a blurred outline. Елка еще пока на девяносто процентов готова. The Christmas tree is ready for ninety percent only. There is some work left to be done. И чуть позже на Фейсбуке вы сможете увидеть готовую работу. So a bit later on my Facebook page, you could see the ready-made work after we finish it. So this is all that I wanted to show and to share with you today. Goodbye. Bye. So, so bye to everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Boris. What a treat to see the foyer of the hotel like that. Magic. And uh, in the World Flower Council news, I will publish the uh, uh, notation for Boris's Facebook page so that our World Flower Council members can enjoy further of the Christmas work. Pooh, what a wonderful show. Definitely, definitely. I would like to take this privilege. As you know, I very, very much um, enjoy this demonstration. I would like to be um, the representative on behalf of World Flower Council to say thank you Spicy bar. Thank you. Spicy bar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Spicy bar. Bar. <laughs> it's spicy bar. you know, it thank you so much stunning. for your interest. It's very, I have to bow. I, I would like to thank you so thank much. You it's, uh, your design is stunning. I do work a lot for the hotel and I know the limitation and I understand the concept. You are so clever to use and Recycle so many material around you to be a new character and a new drama for your hotel work. I do love your structure. I love simplicity and I love the way you showcase the floral material from Sochi itself. I think this is the right place, the right time, and the right technique. I have to say. Your bouquet is inspiring. I love bouquet work, but this one is the best. Bouquet, beautiful. Somebody are so scared of making bouquet, but you make it so easy <laughs> and very <laughs> natural. Thank you once again for your lovely presentation. Last but not least, your Christmas tree. It's my blowing. My mind was blow, and it's not a blur illusion that you say, but it's continued imagination. 
Оно продолжает You left the idea for every viewer to continue their imagination. What next Christmas tree can become? It's a pop-up art. It's a 3D dimension and a very, very well dreamy atmosphere for the hotel. Again, thank you so much, Boris. Previous. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I also Bye -bye. would like to. Not yet. Not yet. I also would like to say thank you to Seta. About your uh, translation, it's wonderful, and it uh, you are very knowledgeable. And I again thank you you for helping and support Boris. It was a real pleasure for me. Last but not least, I would like also to thank our friend from Saint Petersburg, Svetlana. Mm -hmm. Hello, Svetlana. We always Svetlana. meeting her around Svetlana. in the Svetlana. second meeting. Yes. Sweat, yes. And I would like to share to everyone that I don't speak Russian. They don't speak Thai, and we both cannot speak much. But our joy of flowers and our friendship last more than twenty years. Previous, previous. <laughs> so you know, every time we only use body language and flower language to communicate to one another. Thank you, spicy bar, spicy bar. Thank you. <laughs> Last but not least, I would like to thank Malcolm Angus, our commentators for today. You have my highlights, especially, and uh, allow us to enjoy more knowledge as well as more technique of floral material and the designing part. Once again, thank you, Malcolm. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is so wonderful to have different uh, culture of flowers, and we all both understand on the floral language. That what I would say. That is all about world flower culture. Are all about and Boris being our member for more than 20 years. Next time you have to see him dance. He is the best dancer ever. Designers, we have very privilege to have with us the world renowned. Teacher, instructor, designer, whatever you like to say. She is from the Netherlands. Can I have Jacqueline Boma, please? Yes. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes. 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 But yes I think we can. Going to have, they're going to I have. They're going to have the chill. Go on or what? I know, of course, she is the greatest teacher from Boma Institute of Holland, the Netherlands. Jacqueline worked in the floral business from 1981, then become the teacher, then become a uh, managing director, and now she is the owner of Boma Institute of Holland. And we know Jacqueline for us, and she used to be our host when we were Flower Council Summit meeting in the Holland as well. Along with Jacqueline, of course, um, another great designer from the Netherlands, I would like to introduce our commentator today, Els Hasenberg from the Netherlands. Both, they are from the same country, and they promised me they are not speaking Dutch. So enjoy the session between Jacqueline and Els, please. Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to Alsmeer. Uh, that's our uh, home country and our home city. I live only 10 minutes away from uh, the Jacqueline uh, Burma Institute. And um, so we, uh, we share a lot. And I'm very much looking forward to your demonstration, Jacqueline. I know you have a lot to show us. So please go ahead. Well, thank you, Els. Thank you, everybody from the World Flower Council to uh, invite me for the demonstration. Um, after a very busy two weeks here at the school, because we had the master course with uh, Gregor Lers, we have a quiet, a quiet weekend. So I'm having a cup of coffee together with that. Um, and that also brings me to my first design, because uh, we are from Holland. And actually, Els and I are from the same city, town-like. 
uh, Aalsmeer, and that's where the uh, biggest flower auction of the world is. Uh, we also have some nice materials uh, to, to show you. Um, this is one of the designs that we will make um, for our uh, Christmas courses, our workshops. Um, and it's a Christmas tree. It's not as big, of course, as, uh, as Boris' uh, beautiful uh, Christmas tree at the hotel. But it's more for a homely uh, uh, arrangement. Um, and this year we have a popular color, normally a uh, Dutch uh, style. Delos blue is not so popular. But at this moment, this year, we have a very popular style. And that's um, um, an overload of flowers uh, together with uh, Dell's blue. So my inspiration for this was this uh, beautiful, I hope you can see that, the beautiful um, uh, Dell's blue uh, plate. Sorry, I have to. Sometimes I have to walk away a little bit. Uh, I'm the only one at the school, except for my partner, but he doesn't do the floral design. Um, uh, so that was my inspiration. And I also bought a very nice cup for myself uh, for the morning coffee. Um, I have made this Christmas tree and I have made it oval, as you can see. So it's not round, but it's more something for a buffet table or something like that. Uh, what is the base, uh, Jacqueline? Is there an oasis in it? Did you yes. insert the, the, um, the greens into exactly. the oasis? So it's a man-made Christmas tree, you yes, can say. Yes, it's not bought. It is a container. It's a, a recycled plastic container. And in that, we have the uh, blocks of oasis. And it's the biodegradable foam. Of so course. it's not... Uh, the green one anymore but it's uh, and they are developing it and at this moment it is uh, biodegradable for 91 percent and with that i have made uh, one block and a half and then i stack them on smaller and then put in sticks probably i can still take one out yeah like these uh, wooden sticks and then i push them down so they disappear in my arrangement and then I used the materials in groups. Let me see, here it is. I'm always confused with left and right on this screen because I can see myself on a big screen. Um, and it's the opposite, <laughs> it's the other way around. So here we have some, uh, some uh, uh, Christmas tree. We have some Galax. I also put in some blue and gold uh, Christmas balls and I grouped them. So you can really see it's not a, uh, a bought Christmas tree, but it's man-made. And with that, I'm going to use some uh, asparagus. And the asparagus gives a little bit more extra light to it and a little bit more uh, airiness. It's not going to hold until Christmas in this case, but in the week of uh, December 14th, December 11th and December 14th, until the 14th, we are making these uh, Christmas uh, courses. Are there any questions for me? I don't see any questions at the moment, but um, I'm glad to uh, transfer them to you. But Yes, if there, if there are, please do so, because I'm a little bit far away from my, from my computer. So I can't see what I'm, uh, what if there are any questions. So um, I'm using again this uh, Christmas uh, materials. I'm using the uh, conifer like this because my Christmas tree doesn't have a top yet. I'm going to cut it like that. And I'm going to insert the top. Mm. And yep. I do that, I can do that with, of course, with the pine tree, I can use it. In this case, I use the a nicely horizontally growing conifer or a nicely vertical growing conifer, actually. Um, and then I'm making a top with that. 
it is so nice to use the different uh, types of greens in it and the different shades of green that makes it very lively and very interesting. Yes, it is. And then here in Holland, we actually don't use a lot of flowers in our Christmas arrangements. Eh? Maybe just some, uh, um, some amaryllis or some, uh, some lilies or some callas, uh, maybe even some roses. But that's about it. We don't use a lot of um, flowers. But I, I think the, the prosettias are very popular at Christmas, of course. Do you use yes. those in arrangements as well? Uh, no, here in Holland, we don't have the, the prosettias as a cut flower. But a couple of years ago, I was in Japan. And then uh, I had the uh, privilege of using them as a cut flower because they were uh, I bought them like that at the flower auction in the uh, Ota market in, uh, in Tokyo. Um, I have also some, uh, some pine cones, of course. They're with, for me, they always go uh, with the Christmas uh, feeling. Uh, I have used, I'm using uh, some um, cone-shaped ones, some long ones. And I like that because it... Uh, elongates my flower design and I'm going to use them on a double leg so they're more secure and then they come out on top of each other like that and then I just twist my pine cone I don't twist my wires because then it's not so secure and I keep the double leg so with the double leg can you see yeah. that there yes. um, it has more balance and I used to my wire cutters from Japan. That's also nice because they're quite sharp. And then I place that one in. I have used some Christmas balls on sticks as well. I don't use them on wire, but on sticks. Um, the oasis dries out, so my wooden sticks don't really uh, start to rot. Um, but and these are the easiest ones to use, so it perfectly fits into the into the ball. And then, and I group the Christmas balls, so I don't want to use them one by one, but I like to group them. That grouping technique is uh, is wonderful, and uh, everybody knows that I'm very much in favor of that because. When you do that, you make the material more important. Uh, exactly. Are you are you still hearing me? Because yes. My, okay, you st okay. I thought you were saying something, and then I probably interrupted you, and then your sound was lost. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> I, I this is my first Zoom meeting, so <laughs> uh, uh, it's a little bit. Uh, scary feeling because I'm on my own. Normally I have, we have Angelica, we have Mike and Axel doing the techniques. But in this case, this morning, I was all by myself. Although I had some help from a distance because uh, I couldn't get the Zoom meeting on. So. <laughs> what is that uh, material? That's that yeah. garland, it's what is nice, it? It's a nice uh, ribbon. And it's a little bit uh, yeah, shiny with some gold in it because I like to repeat the color of the, of the Christmas balls. So I use them on a wire, just a single wire. And then I can place them inside the arrangement. And then I go around. So it's also like a, a garland uh, type of uh, thing. And it's, I can use several. And then I connect it here as well on the back. Or actually, there is no back because it's an all sided arrangement. Like that. And then, oops, one is gone. Yeah, I had another one. But I'll just decorate that around a little bit on the top. Move it around again. 
And I also have used a string of uh, lights. You probably see this dangling here. Yeah, yes. That's, that's, uh, those are lights. So it's not just a string of silver things, but it's, uh, these are lights. I will turn them on because they're on a the battery. And then, of course, I also have some, yeah, some nice shiny Christmas balls with some houses on it. And it says Holland. So <laughs> I also add some kits. That's what we call it. We were talking about kits. What was Ivo from uh, Czech Republic? He's, he asked, uh, how can you, how can you, what is, what is kits? So, well, this is kits. I think, I think, and because they're plastic. Great. It's always nice to have a funny uh, surprise in an arrangement that makes you yeah. makes you look uh, up closer and uh, it brings some interest uh, to it. Yes, I think so too. So you have, you need to have some fun, right? Yes. So last two weeks, as I said, we had a master course with Gregor and I also joined the, the class and also my son, Mike, joined the class. And it was so very interesting. I, we all loved because we were with uh, 13 students from all around. Thank God it was going, it could happen anyway. We were so lucky because we had to postpone it for like two years. And this, this time it could go on just before the more or less lockdown that we are going to have in uh, in Holland. So again, again, yes, the lockdown. unfortunately, again. Yes. Uh, where are my lights? Oh, here. Can you see them? Yes, we can. On. Yeah. So this is my first design in gold <laughs> and blue and a little bit of the Dutch um, Delft blue. Beautiful I'm textures. Walking out of the screen, sorry. And then I just had that Christmassy feeling. But before we are going to Christmas, we of course still have autumn. Oh, <laughs> lucky that was not a bucket of water. My, uh... wow. My earpiece, my earpiece dropped into oh. a bucket, but it's luckily it was not water. Okay, um, that looks exciting, and that re reminds me of Gregor's uh, course last week. I went to um, to visit you and to visit him and to see all the different designs, and this looks like you were inspired by him. Yes, correct. Um, I we have uh, one of the students. Uh, she lives in uh, Dordrecht. Her name is uh, uh, Nelly, and she has a very nice gardener. And we can always collect some branches uh, with her. Um, and in this case, I found a frame, and that inspired me to um, to use because she wanted to throw it away. And it's actually I don't we don't know exactly what kind of thing it is, but it's made out of metal. And it has a holder. It has a like a stem with with some uh, branches inside, and it's open, so it's rusted because she had it in a garden. She didn't uh, use it for a long time. And then um, Gregor was making a big piece. I will show you that in a couple of minutes. And I thought, yes, now finally I know a way to use the uh, frame that I got from Nelly. So I have, I have used, um, because it's open, I wanted to show the, the airiness. So I have used an uh, Oasis uh, biodegradable uh, wreath. And from outside, because it's still autumn, I have some leaves. And then I use some binding wire like this oasis binding wire and i have um, connected all these leaves 
just by binding them on the wreath. But then I had to cut my uh, oasis ring into, into uh, pieces because it didn't completely fit in the frame. So I did that and I placed it in the frame. And then I have made also some candlesticks by myself. So they're not bought. I used um, 2.0 wire, so two millimeter wires. And I have uh, turned them around with uh, binding wire with uh, the not, uh, not, not, uh, not the green wire, but the net, the, the what is, what's it called? Else, help me out yeah, here. The, the plain uh, binding yeah, wire. The yes. plain binding yeah, wire, yeah, yes, yeah. thank you. Um, and then I've made these into um, some, some uh, little, smaller uh, wires. So that was a 1.2. I, next time I will use a 1.6 because then I have to, have to can I, then I can use less wires. So it was now more work than it I actually intended. And then I bent them into the frame and I bound them into the center of the frame. I will spray them with water. And then because of the water, it will oxidize. So it will turn into rust. And then also this color from the frame will come back into the uh, candle holders. Very clever, beautiful. Yeah, that's what, that's what Gregor showed, huh? Yes. And uh, the, uh, the asymmetrical shape, uh, I noticed in his designs that he had a lot of asymmetrical arrangement and also the, several of the designs that we saw this morning or uh, today by Matthew and by Boris, they, they were asymmetrical as well. It seems to be a trend uh, to do that. Yes. And of course, we as designers, we want to find new ways of designing and be creative. And this seems to be the direction we are going into. Yeah, I think you could also see that at the World Cup, the, the winner of the World Cup in, uh, in uh, uh, where was it, last time, that was, um, from, he was from Australia. And uh, he also made uh, a lot of uh, asymmetrical work. And he used also some very nice, beautiful uh, paviopedalums and some uh, exotic, for us exotic, of course, um, uh, flowers um, like heliconias and other beautiful materials. Um, and that was also asymmetrical. So I think it was it was coming back again because of that uh, competition. Yeah. I have some beautiful ginkgo, ginkgo biloba leaves. They're from my tree outside. And they're turned nicely yellow, golden, I must say. Uh, one time um, I was, uh, well, we've been to Japan uh, quite a lot of times, but one time I visited the um, Ginkgo festival and then uh, we also ate the nuts, the seeds of the Ginkgo. And that was very nice, very beautiful to see, very special. So many uh, Ginkgo trees. I have two in my garden and I always collect them. They're beautiful. They're beautiful, to they're decorative. And I like your necklace. I'm uh, sure that it is a real, uh, not a real leaf, but. Uh, well, well the, the designer of that uh, necklace, of the, of the leaf, didn't want to say how he made it, but I bought that one in Japan. Yes. So, um, uh, yeah, I only wear it in autumn time. I don't wear it in springtime. Uh, it's beautiful. It's very yeah, decorative. I love yes. it. Yes. Yeah. So I'm using this uh, pinko leaves at the base, so my base gets a little bit stronger. And I cut my leaves, of course, and then I wire them on a 0.6 wire. Here we use the German wires from H&R. And um, these are uh, lacquered, so they have a layer, and so that way they don't rust that fast. 
as the, the, the black ones. I use the holes for the, of the uh, frame to go in between. And um, I will also repeat some of the leaves on the inside. So you get a little bit more color, interesting color on the inside as well. On the outside, I have a little bit of the uh, polygonum. This one, it is uh, the, the, the one that is uh, climbing upwards. It's not the polygonum that uh, that is, um, we cannot sell that anymore here in, uh, in Holland. And we cannot buy it, we cannot use it. And uh, because that one is uh, invasive. So we cannot use yes. that, but this one is still growing here. And that is like a vine? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's like a vine. I don't, I have not seen the, uh, I have not seen it in, so I don't know exactly how it looks like when it's not dried, but it, but it grows in Gregor's uh, garden. Oh yeah. And I think it has white flowers. Yes. Yeah, that's what he said. So I also use some um, some nice uh, protea. I've used some uh, anthuriums, and I also use some beautiful uh, roses. They're like a green eye, so they have a little bit of difference in the heart. Mm -hmm. And they, they are, are placed in glass tubes? Uh, no, I've placed them in the oasis. The oasis is wet. Oh, yes. I'm not a very big fan of, uh, of uh, tubes. No, so, why not? No, well, you have to water that all the time. See, when you use clematis or you use uh, lilies, they drink a lot. Mm -hmm. So, And the roses also drink a lot. So I prefer to keep my oasis wet instead of... Uh, watering the, the tubes uh, every uh, every day. Okay. But if I need to, I, I use them, but preferably not. Like that. And then I also still have some Talinum, Talinum Long John. This is a new product from uh, Marginpar. It comes from uh, Kenya. And it has a very airy, veil, veil looking like uh, structure. Uh, very nice to use. Keeps for a long time and it also dries. So that's also very nice. Like that. It's nice material. I don't know that. Does it come in different colors? No, it only comes in the, in this uh, in this color, so, and it's fairly new. It's from uh, Marvin for. Yeah, you yeah. See it? How yes. airy it is. Nice, yeah. 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 Very nice. And and it has those little balls, uh, round round shape uh, materials, and then I also like that to come back into my hypericum. Oh yeah. So the shape of the of the balls come back into that hypericum berry. And I like to use that a little bit lower. So I have some airy materials going up and then some heavier materials going down. Although normally I would say the heavier materials at the base, but uh, with Gregor the last two weeks, he said also it's very interesting to use some bigger flowers to the height. So they, uh, they catch more, they are more eye catching also in the height. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did uh, this time. But I normally would use them a little bit lower. So I'm still learning. So even though at my age, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, I, like to, I like to keep uh, learning. I think of that keeps, you, uh, keeps your mind fresh. 
Of course, that's why, why those courses are so wonderful because you get a different uh, uh, view of materials. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that is that is important. I think we continuously are learning and be learning from each other. And you always have to be in life and be in uh, be creative and um, approach everything with an open mind and decide for yourself what you want to use. Yeah, exactly. And how you use it. And I think everybody has his or her own style. So I think also with Gregor, he's so he's so kind and he's so knowledgeable and also such a such a nice person and he explained so well that I was very lucky oops that I was very lucky to be in the class I always wanted to join that but because it's in Bad Neuenaar and we are so busy I couldn't so I organized my own course very good I'm also using some Hedera Erecta the Hedera Erecta grows in my garden very well so um, we cut in autumn time or Christmas time so we can use those uh, as well in the arrangement just to add some lively green to that and I have some echinacea oops there you go like that yes you can see that yeah, yeah. yeah. So they have lost their petals, but they have not lost their uh, value. No, they're, they're very decorative and I like the texture very much. Yeah. And it's, it's very good to use in, uh, in fall arrangements. Yeah, they exactly. have the, this orangey shine uh, to it as well. Then I also have some protea, some uh, Lycospermum nutans. And then I will place that opposite or more or less opposite. So you have the Lycospermum like Newtons there with the orange. You have the orange candles. And then I also like to use, so to add on this side. So it's more or less an unequal triangle. And I try to see if I can manage that to the inside. So I create some extra depths in there. See? Very nice. In, in all areas of the arrangement, there's something to see. And yeah. since you group several materials, your eye really travels uh, through the arrangements and there's depth in there and it's different from all sides. That makes it interesting. Yeah, I think the, the frame was my inspiration. That was my first inspiration. My first thought, I need to do something with that. And then uh, Gregor used the, um, the orange uh, flowers and uh, materials in his arrangement. And then I thought, yes, I want to make something like that. Very nice. What Beautiful else? textures and different size of material. That makes it interesting uh, too. You have some larger forms and some small forms in the Hypericum and some intermediate forms and then the, the loose branches and the vines. Uh, it makes it it makes it airy and very interesting. Good. Uh, else, can you please tell me how long I still have? Uh, to be honest, I didn't watch the, the clock very much. But um, oh, well, I'll, I'll just go on until Pooh or somebody stops me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you I, I didn't watch the, the clock. But, okay. Well, but we'll, we'll maybe you, you have like 10 minutes more or something okay, like that. Okay. So I add one more interesting rose. And then this arrangement is ready. Great. And then I like to show you some. Hello, I like yeah, to show I... you some of the uh, of the work that uh, Gregor did. Some Very of the good. beautiful stuff. I will first show you the one that inspired me to make this one. Okay. It needs to. I need to move things. Eh? My assistants are gone for the day, so no, just joking. Wow. Aren't we used to do everything ourselves? 
we can deal with Jacqueline. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> See? Oh. This was the arrangement that Gregor did. Yes. It's, it's a lot bigger. And it is uh, not in oasis. It's placed in tubes. Yes. So he used uh, bamboo and he used plastic tubes at the base. And he made the frame himself. So he made that with uh, willow. And then he um, flechte. He uh, wove. He, he was weaving. He was weaving the, uh, the, the willow into the frame. And it also has metal foot, feet, actually. And then he connected the stronger wire, the 1.8 wires. And he turned them with the Oasis uh, binding wire into the frame. We have some very beautiful rose hips here um, and some heliconias and of course also some nice uh, grasses as well. Mm -hmm. And strelitzia, I see the strelitzia. Yes, strelitzias yeah. are in there too as well, yeah. yes. So that was a very nice, beautiful arrangement which inspired me to make, uh, to make mine. I can imagine. So this goes out of the frame again. So he, uh, Gregor made his own uh, sculptures um, with the wires. He, he creates feet to the yes. arrangement and then he moves on from that, uh, yeah. which is very clever. Yeah, and he, he is inspired by several things. So he's inspired from nature, but also some from food or from other kinds of things that uh, he sees everywhere in his life. And he also made this beautiful arrangement. Oops, let's wow. see. Yeah, that goes well. Um, so that was a wall decoration that he made. He made Can you pull it on a little bit farther towards you? Yes, like that? Yeah. Little, or what, the other uh, way around? No, no, like you were doing. A, li a okay. little bit more. A little bit more. Like this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Well, so he used some uh, uh, agapanthus and he used uh, my father's favorite flowers, the paviopedalum. Oh, and, yes. Uh, this is made on two uh, metal rings and the grasses are glued around it. And then he also, because this is very heavy on one side, he uses a stone to balance it on the opposite side. Oh. So that's very interesting to look at. And also he uses the vertical lines to give some extra depth and extra dimension to the arrangement. And also with these hanging, um, I think they're senatios, uh, going down in strings and it also creates uh, depth with it. Yes. And the glass tubes he covered with a string, I think. Yes, yes. With, with a natural uh, material. Yes, with the natural material of the, um, uh, it, it's rope, it's waxed rope. rope. Yes. He uses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he probably told you that uh, as well when you visited uh, last week or the week before. I think yes. last week, right? Yeah, yeah. twice, and, twice I came. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you also met Gabi again after a long time, eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, his wife. Yeah. I feel so very fortunate that I had the opportunity to come uh, to see the school and to see uh, Gregor's work and also the work that the students did uh, yeah. inspired by him. It's, it's so wonderful to see how a teacher can inspire uh, students and um, make how they make their own interpretation of what the teacher does. And that's what I like very much. We should never copy what a teacher does, but we should adapt the ideas and the technique that he shows us and then uh, make it your own make, creation. Yes, exactly. You're exactly right. That's what we, uh, what we all did. He inspired us uh, a lot. And next, next year in March, we have two, 10 more days with him and then we also have an exam. So then we will be uh, doing, I will also do the exam in uh, international master education. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm also a little bit nervous about that. 
Or so uh, Gregor is the judge and two other international designers will be uh, judging the uh, arrangements. And we will have to make two arrangements as homework and we will make an assignment book with that. And then we also will have to make um, a theoretical exam with all the with a lot of botanical names. So we have to learn some more names. Mostly I already know them, but it's good to uh, refresh our minds. Mm -hmm. And then also we will have to make three arrangements. We'll have to make uh, a bridal bouquet, a hand tied bouquet, and a buffet arrangement or a, a display arrangement, display displacement arrangement a buffet arrangement and a, and a bridal bouquet. So that's the three things that we have to do. Wonderful. That's a very good program, a very versatile. Yes, and it's very long days as well. So we really do a lot in the morning. We have we start at nine and then um, we have explanation and theory and drawings. Every every drawing is made uh, by uh, by Gregor. And also it's new, so we, he doesn't repeat anything. He is making us a new program. And then he shows photos. And then uh, in the afternoon, we make our own designs. And in the morning, actually we start at, at 8.30. Um, and then also we um, talk about our, our all uh, arrangements, our arrangements. And then, uh, so everything is discussed, what you, what you did well, what you could do better, things like that. And he's always in a positive way giving his uh, critique. So it's very nice. Wonderful. Great opportunity to, yeah, the, to participate. Also, yeah, yeah. It's a very, very unique course. Uh -huh. And uh, we will do that again, actually. So uh, Gregor uh, likes it so much that he has agreed to do it one more time. So next year, in November, we will start with a new class. And then also, so it will be November, and then it will be April in uh, 2023, that will be the exam. Great, great. Wonderful yeah. to know that. Thank yeah. you. If everything goes on as well, eh? so we'll just... If we all stay healthy. Exactly, that's... exactly. Yes. And this is another masterpiece that, uh, that he did. And this, these are actually my favorite colors. So I just, I just pull this towards me. This is a, a metal ring that he used, that Gregor used, and he used uh, the strings by um, Lener Wuhler. Uh, Lener Wool, uh, they are from Austria, and uh, he waxed the, the wool and he used some wood, uh, uh, wood strips and he put everything on, uh, on bamboo. And this, these branches are notophagus. So in Dutch, I know it's a schijnbeuk, but I don't know the English word for that. And he has made a very uh, strong line opposite of the uh, vertical lines with his flowers. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it's I quite like rhythmical or, and there's weight uh, there. Uh, the vertical lines are very nice and the spray roses, I think I recognize. Yes. Yeah, yes, spray roses by uh, by Interplant, some uh, some nice uh, on small anthuriums, the lovely anthuriums, some beautiful uh, color, some beautiful colored uh, carnations, and they actually attract the uh, the color from the gray and from the bright pink into into one uh, flower. So that's very nice. And we also have Nerina. And yes. from Gregor said that he, when he was in Japan, he also saw some, uh, some orange uh, uh, nerine and some yellowish ones. So yes. I'm very looking forward to, to see those uh, in Holland because yeah. I love, I love the, the, the nerine, but yeah. it's only in pink in Holland. So I would prefer them also in other colors so I can use them in other arrangements as well. Very good, beautiful. Very yeah. elegant, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That that is a true masterpiece. Yes, Thank you for yes. sharing that with us, Jacqueline. Yeah, we have and so much more in the school because we still have the arrangements. We have an open house uh, on Monday evening. Uh, well, we should we would have an open house on Monday evening, but all the arrangements, the wall decorations are still here, and I would love to show some more. But unfortunately, I cannot show all. My camera is stuck on a on a 
tripod so i cannot walk around unfortunately like uh, like boris did so but i thank you very much for uh, for watching this demo and the work by gregor of course thank you thank you very much jacqueline it was quite a pleasure and quite a treat to get uh, that bonus those bonus arrangements that gregor did uh, for you and for the school and for us thank you beautiful thank you very much Thank you so much, Jacqueline. It was stunning design and I really inspired a lot from your own design as well as from Gregor design. May I have Malcolm Ankers for the word of thanks, please? Well, that was just such a treat from the Netherlands uh, team. Uh, Elle's contribution I thought was vital uh, to uh, help explain the so many techniques um, that you actually um, showed us. The, um, I, I was very taken with your use of the ginkgo and uh, uh, the leaves uh, here in New Zealand are, are just very, very fresh because it's our late spring now. Yes. And, um, it was nice to see the transition uh, from the Northern Hemisphere. Thank you so much for a really inspired uh, performance with uh, a real bonus of um, some of the uh, Gregor designs. Um, but of course, your own were incredible as well. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your contribution to the World Flower Council always. Thank you. My pleasure, Malcolm. Thank you very much, Els, as well. Thank you for your comment and, and help with me uh, translating some things. You're, you're most welcome, always. What can I say? This is the best of the best and one of the most memorable uh, episodes that we had in World Flower Council. This is what we are all about, we have passion, love, and um, sharing my and concepts of all the designing in the different parts of the world. Again, I would like to have a little short um, notice to all of you that um, World Flower Council Asia Pacific is about to launch our coming Christmas electronic ebook, which is coming soon by the mid of next month, the middle of December. And I have to use this opportunity to thank you all the members in Asia Pacific from many countries. In total, we have approximately 158 um, design pictures from 15 countries around Asia Pacific region. Thank you so much for your contribution, participation, as well as the support. And the last, I would like to have Mr. Efren Chateau, our international chairman of World Flower Council, for the closing statement as well as announcing for the next um, episode date. Thank you, Pooh. What a lively day, indeed. Thank you, thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us through the show. And of course, our deepest gratitude to our distinguished designers, Ms. Madusa from Sydney, Australia, Mr. Boris Minyailo of Suchi, Russia, and Ms. Jacqueline Burma, AIFD of the Netherlands. Thank you for the very creative, imaginative, amazing and very beautiful designs you shared with us this afternoon. Very in interesting and inspiring techniques indeed. Thank you so much. There is so much to learn. Thank you. Special thanks likewise to Zeta Ermakova, who is the Russian interpreter of Boris. And likewise to Svetlana, our dear friend, from Russia, who only assisted Boris in his work. Our big thanks also to our very able commentators, 
who, by the way, have always been assisting us through since the previous episodes. Their thoughts, comments, and clarifications help us appreciate more the works of our designers. Ms. El Sassenberg, AIFD of the Netherlands, Mr. Malcolm Angus of New Zealand. And of course, to our very energetic event director, who was Chismati of Bangkok, Thailand, for crafting once again this online demo for us this afternoon. Thank you, Pooh. To the members of our IT team, JD and Anne Abinasa and PY Chato, thank you for your assistance. At this point, I wish to announce that our next episode, episode six, will be held on December 18, 2021. This is the third Saturday of December. We decided to have this earlier because the last Saturday of December happens to fall on Christmas Day. So we look forward to see you all once again for our next episode in the month of December. Thank you all and blessings to everyone. Good day. Make a little remark that today we have a lot of uh, non uh, World Flower Council members uh, joining us today. I think because of we have Madhu Shah, so we have many friends from Kenya as well as well as from Australia. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And I can see a few names from Russia, maybe by invitation of Boris. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. This is a World Flower Council. We are a non-profit organization internationally on floral uh, industry. So you are most welcome to join us and looking forward to have you once again for the next episode on the 18th of December. Alice, your, your Christmas tree is wonderful, beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Thank you. I would like to go back again in to, to, to Russia, but I never been to Sochi. So whenever you have a flower show or activity, please let us know. We will join you. We will come to Russia. Hello. Hello, Tanaka-san. Hello. Good to see you. Hello, everyone. Hello, Boris. Hello. Hello. And it's Colleen. Hello. Hello. This, this is Colleen from Australia. What a wonderful afternoon I have had. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's no, beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful we have to and very, very yeah. well organized. Thank you once again from Australia. Thank you, Colleen. We have to 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 congratulate Australia that you know Madhu Madhu Shah has done a fantastic design and stunning. She wow us and make Australia proud. Thank you, thank you for uh, your contribution and support as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Colleen. Nice to hear you. Looking forward to our next summit. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to that. Anson Low name. Anson, are you here? Are you BC? Yes. How things will go forward. And it's wonderful that World Flower Company is really bringing it to us. Thank you so much, Ephraim. It must have been extremely difficult get pulling it all together. We're very proud to be part of it. Thank you so much, Colleen. Nice words. Yeah, it was really a great treat for us this afternoon with our designers and our, uh, our commentators, all of our presenters. Great indeed. And we're happy you're watching us uh, this afternoon, evening for you in Australia. Thank you. And thank you. We look forward to more in the future. Yes, yes, yeah, we look forward to that. <laughs> Is Maddie here with us today? 
Madhvi. Yes, I'm not good with technology, so I'm always nervous in case I don't make it. <laughs> don't worry, we are we are all learning. <laughs> yes. With this new um, gadgets available now, yeah, and it's nice because we can communicate with each other. So, so it's really nice, easier. No? <laughs> 